Good morning, friends. Um, I'm doing this on Thursday morning before I've had any coffee. So if I say anything weird, I'm going to blame it on the lack of caffeine. Um, hope y'all are having a great day. Um, I am just, I, I'm going to share something that the Lord's just put on my heart and hope that it turns into a devotional. So let's pray. God, thank you so much that you love us. Thank you so much that you are the God of order in a time of chaos. Sometimes when it feel, feels like, and God, when you are in control, God, you are the Prince of Peace. Father, you just sing over us with gladness and you fill our, our lives with your spirit. And Father, we just can't um, be more thankful for who you are and what you've done for us. We love you. Um, I pray you would speak through me, Father, and about what you've put on my heart. And um, pray they have a great rehearsal tonight, Father, and just worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so, uh, lately the Lord's kind of just been talking to me about obedience, um, and what that looks like. And a lot of times I feel like we want the easy way out and we want like just, um, a revelation or we just want a word from the Lord. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and read this, um, quote. It's from a, a sermon series that I started listening to. It's on revelation, um, through the village church. It's really good. Um, but I'm going to try to not say um so much. That's kind of annoying. Um, but here's the, uh, here's the quote. So, obedience is better than revelation. For people who just say, I want to hear a word from God, do what he's already told us to do, and you're going to hear a lot more from him. I can see that coming for us. Yes, we need to have ears to hear that still small voice of the Spirit but you're not going to ever hear it if you never do it. To know the word of God, to walk in the word of God, and to pummel hell with prayers to heaven. I want to be a threat. I want to be ignited with evangelistic zeal. What would it look like if we actually believed God could save our neighbor? Um, that kind of struck me because um, I think a lot of times we want to walk in power or we want a revelation or we want kind of the, you know, these easy things. But, you know, and we're going through First Peter right now in a, a Bible study and First Peter 1.16 says, as it is written, because it's written multiple times in the Bible where he says, be holy for I am holy, um, which is kind of a scary and intimidating phrase for me. But that is his call on our life to be obedient to him. And um, I once, I remember some, talking about the tree and in the Garden of Eden and like, like why, why did God even put the tree there um, if he knew we were going to sin, if he knew the fall? So it was like all these interesting conversations. But I think my favorite answer was that it was put there to show that obedience to God is important. Um and so I'm sure someone put it more eloquently than that, but that's what I took from it. And so, you know, having faith and walking in obedience, you know, take having faith, I'm learning, is taking God at his word, trusting that he is going to do what he says he's going to do, that he is the God of covenant and promises from the word that just... Um, that we can trust in that and that we that we do believe that that he can save our neighbors like what does that actually look like not like oh he can save everybody but like actually what is that going to look like boots on the ground action in our lives obedience in our lives um if we actually believe that and know that that um that he is faithful to keep his word. So, you know, kind of looking at like, why are we obedient? John 14, 15 tells us that he said, if you love us, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, that we will obey his commandments because that obedience should pour out of our love that we have for him. Um, and we are called to be doers of the word, which requires our obedience to him. Um, you know, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what Psalms 111, 10 says. And, you know, fear of the Lord in our life is going to look like an awe and respect that we have um, of him. And and that in turn, I think, will um, obedience to him will pour out in our lives. Um, and when I, so it's kind of like what, you know, obedience, what does that look like? You know, you may like feel like you've got it totally crushed with like having daily devotionals. Um, but are we obedient in our prayer life? Are we obedient in sharing our faith? Um, are we, you know, obedient in being, you know, thinking of being like worship leaders? Um, 
are we being obedient and having a heart to worship the Father and to lead and teach other people in and to come into that space to worship with us on Sunday mornings? Like, so I think the challenge for me, like, what does obedience look like in your life? Um, where do you feel like you're lacking? If you don't feel like you're lacking, I would say spend some time in prayer and ask the Lord to, to search you and to know your heart and to reveal things to you in your life that um, might need to be tweaked and might need to be changed because I don't know that we've ever officially arrived until we go to glory. Um, and, and then what steps do we need to take to achieve that obedience? You know, um, making a, a list for things you're going to pray for, making, you know, being intentional um, about certain things is self-discipline. It is not, um, I kind of used to think, well, I don't want to have a checklist for God. Like I don't want to have a, and, and you don't, you don't want your motivation for your obedience to be um, because you want to check off the boxes. Um, but we want it to, uh, to be from an out of love and affection that we have our our love for Christ is what's going to drive us towards that obedience so um and it's he calls us to that all of us I've been in first Peter it talks about submission to authority and then wives submitting to their husbands and like Blake just talked about um submission and 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 it also talks in first Peter about slaves. And so, but then finally he wraps it up with like, but in the body of Christ, we need to have a unity of mind, a tender heart, um, sympathy. There were like five things. So I'm missing a couple things. Sorry, but I don't have it open in front of me, but, um, the call for us is that every single one of us, husbands, wives, worship leaders, pastors, we are to be submissive to the authority of God. And that is where our ultimate obedience comes from. That's where we can flourish in our lives. Um, so that's all I really have. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm scatterbrained. We're leaving this weekend. Y'all can pray for us. We are going to my grandmother's funeral, um, which I am um, speaking at and I'm kind of excited about. That sounds weird, but I've been praying for opportunities for the gospel just to be shared during this time. Um, so um, y'all can pray for me in that. <laughs> I'm being needy <laughs> when I'm doing the devotional. <laughs> um, so if y'all could just pray for me. But um, I'm going to pray over y'all and over the team and what um, obedience can look like in our life. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we can trust you to give you authority, Lord, that we can gladly submit to you, Father, knowing that you um, love us dearly, that you are the good Father, that you are the good Shepherd, Lord, that we don't have to doubt and be fearful when we surrender all to you, God. I pray that that would be our desire, Father, that you would show each of us individually areas that we can, um, kind of the rough edges that we can burn and that we can, Father, that you would do that in our life, that you would purify us, Father, that we would go through the fire, Lord, that we would be purified, Father. Um, I thank you, God, that um, you just orchestrate all the things in our life, that you have brought us to a place where we can serve you in an area, Father, that encourages worship, whether it's on the AV team, the band, the vocalist, God, you have brought us to a place, God, where we have the ability to do that. And Father, I praise you and thank you for that. May we not ever take that for granted. Um, I pray, uh, Lord, that we would uh, have have a self-sacrificial kind of mindset, God, that we would desire to serve you in everything we do. Um, we love you so much and thank you for every breath that we get to take. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Y'all have a great time. <laughs>